What position did you retire from and what was your horticultural specialization? I retired from being a professor at the University of Minnesota. I was also an extension horticulturist and the area of horticulture I specialized in was landscape plants, especially grasses and their use as landscape plants. So I did a lot of work with uh, cold hardiness of grasses, propagation of grasses, and their use as landscape plants. Thank you, Mary. And what has horticulture meant to both your life and your career? Uh, it's hard for me to separate horticulture from my life and my career. Um, horticulture is my life. And um, it's always been a very uh, satisfying career for me. And, um, you know, horticulture is my vocation, but it's an avocation for many people. It's such a hobby, such a great hobby. And so there are just certain aspects of it that I have as a hobby. And then there are things that are, I, I study as a, uh, from an academic pursuit. Like one of my hobbies is garden history and the history of gardening and garden design of all over the world. And so that's what I read for leisure. And so, so that, yeah, I just, uh, it's very intertwined for me and it's hard to separate it. Um, What was the most rewarding part of your career in horticulture? Well, I think that the first thing that comes to mind is really the students and seeing students uh, understand horticulture, learn about horticulture, and then see them become successful in their careers. Um, I had to track down one of the students I worked with, Perrin Carpenter, recently. She is um, a manager of the city conservatory in Cleveland, Ohio. I knew she was working in Cleveland. I didn't really know exactly what she was doing there, but I tracked her down. And the reason I was looking for her was so that we could put her thesis online in the digital uh, conservatory, conservancy that's online uh, with the U, with the library system. We're trying to digitize everybody's thesis now. And it was great to, to touch base again with Perrin and, and it was pretty easy to find her online um, with her name and horticulture. So <laughs> seeing what students are doing with their lives is very uh, satisfying. It's great really the, the research end of it, understanding and finding out what the answers are to the questions in our research is really, um, that's very satisfying also, but the students really are at the top of the list. And how long were you a member of ASHS? And then the second part of this question is how did the society influence your career? I was kind of late joining ASHS. I didn't join until I was a PhD student. And so that was in the 80s when I joined. But I, I never heard about ASHS when I was an undergrad. And I'm not really sure why. None of my professors talked about it. I, I didn't really know about it. And I definitely didn't go to any meetings when I was an undergraduate. And, and I think the society is more um, uh, I, I'm bigger now. And so that might be helpful. But if you, as an undergrad student, if you can go to the meetings, it's fabulous. And certainly as a graduate student, it's, it's really um, the way to go. Not only do you learn to present your research and talk in front of people, it's who you meet there. It's all the other people that you're going to meet. And, you know, horticulture is not that big a field. And you can get to know colleagues as an undergraduate, certainly as a graduate student. And these are lifelong connections in horticulture that will help you and just make life so much easier for you with your career in horticulture. So it's, it means a great deal to be able to uh, belong to the group and 
and not only go to the conferences and the meetings, but to collaborate on papers and collaborate on grants as well. So it's a great, uh, great family of horticulturists in ASHS. I definitely myself have, have felt that community and it's also the, for the same reasons that you just outlined, it has been so helpful to be a part of ASHS. What advice can you offer to students or young professionals in horticulture? Well, certainly get involved with ASHS, go to the meetings. Um, you know, there are travel grants, there's money to help you go, there are scholarships. Um, I would say, um, you know, get, get involved with ASHS, apply for scholarships because there's so many scholarships within ASHS, within your department, within your state, as well as at a national level um, as well. I would also recommend that you do as many internships as you can at different places, at different regions of the country, so you can really be exposed to the breadth um, of horticulture. Um, I was fortunate enough to be able to help start Seed Your Future when I was the president of ASHS. And Seed Your Future is an amazing, wonderful resource now. As a student, you can look online and find out careers. You can see videos. You can look for internships. You can look for where to go to school by state. It's, it's just an amazing resource that's been created with Seed Your Future. And it's really for young people to understand and get involved with horticulture. 